Welcome to the Christian Church on this first day of the week, June the 12th, 2016. Thank God for his grace and mercy and giving me another opportunity to preach and teach the gospel. Thank God for sparing our lives. We live in a world where tragedies continually happen. And there's one that broke out today where a guy goes into a nightclub and begins to murder people before losing his own life. And it really doesn't matter what type of club it is because the media wants to keep focusing on the fact that the club, club was a club where most of its members that attend this club are people that are living a homosexual lifestyle. That really doesn't matter. What matters is the fact that somebody thought it upon themselves once again to take human lives into their own hands and take people out and take themselves out assuring themselves that they had no opportunity to get it right with God. And the even sadder part about it is there are many people who are not right with God that no longer have an opportunity to get right with God because something unexpected and tragic happened. See, that's why it's important that I preach and teach the gospel correctly. That's why I stand up here and tell people that there's no such thing as these false doctrines that I stand against. And many people are following these false doctrines, such as last week we attacked the doctrine of once saved, always saved, and exposed it as being a false doctrine. Because people think that they can live any kind of way and simply say they believe Jesus died and rose again and get into heaven and not have to turn from their sins or repent or do any of the things that the Bible told them to do or do any of the works that God says accompanies those that believe in Jesus Christ will do the works that Jesus did. We'll heal the sick. We'll feed the poor. We'll clothe the naked. He said his people would do all kinds of signs and wonders, but they would only do it to glorify the Lord, not to glorify themselves. You understand? And that they can't go out and live any kind of way and still be saved. Where there are people that think that they can't lose their salvation. I assure you many people are going into eternity that believed in Jesus but did not repent of their sins and they will not be in heaven. They will not have their works burned up and they still get into heaven. They are eternally lost because there is no reward for the wicked other than a lake of fire. So when they twist scriptures that talk about works being burned up but them still being saved, it has nothing to do with you being wicked. Those things are dealing with award rewards according to the, the sincerity of your actions. See, if you did things for the Lord and you believed in the Lord and served the Lord, but you had these things inside of you where you were a little envious of others or if you felt like you didn't get all the things you thought that you were supposed to get out of the deal, things like that, then your works aren't going to amount to what they should. But that has nothing to do with somebody living in sexual sin or somebody that is destroying their body through alcohol and drugs and things of that nature. That has nothing to do with that judgment. And people are being deceived. Now we're going to continue to attack false doctrines. We're going to attack the false doctrines that people are saying only people who have certain spiritual gifts such as speaking in tongues have the evidence of the Holy Spirit. And I'm here to tell you that the evidence of the Holy Spirit in every believer is the fact that they believe on Jesus Christ. The fact that he died on the cross and rose from the dead. The Holy Ghost comes and lives in you and bears fruit in your life. 
whether or not you get spiritual gifts or not out of the deal is up to God. It is not up to human beings. It is not to, up to people tearing around altars and things like that. And we have a whole group of people called Pentecostals and Charismatics that have people out here to the point where they're doing things and they're not even legitimately doing them. I know because I have people laying hands on me trying to get me to speak in tongues as evidence of the Holy Spirit. And for some wrong reason, I decided to try to stammer out of my mouth and try to say something that I knew wasn't legitimately coming from the Holy Spirit. And I felt conviction immediately. And I even felt a little condemnation because I felt like I had blasphemed God's spirit, which the Bible says there's no forgiveness in, when in actuality I did something in ignorance because somebody falsely taught me, or I, and I was looking at Christian television, so, so to speak, and people were on there doing things like that, and I ended up mimicking. I repented for what I did and said I'd never do it again unless God legitimately gave me a gift of tongues. But I know that the evidence of the Holy Spirit is a changed life. It is not you talking in another language that you didn't learn from Rosetta Stone. Do you understand what I'm saying? It has nothing to do with what they're doing. And they got many people who believe in Jesus running around thinking they don't have the Holy Ghost. I got news for you. You can't get into heaven without the Holy Ghost. So therefore, every believer has the Holy Ghost. You got churches that say, unless, you're, unless you don't have the evidence of speaking in tongues that you're not saved, that is a lie from the pit of hell. You understand? And I'm here to attack those lies with the truth of Scripture. Not going to go through every Scripture. Don't have the time. But I'm going to give you enough of a foundation to seek and study and know that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ and you have repented of your sins, you have the Holy Ghost living in you and you are responsible for your actions. Do you understand? You are responsible for doing right or wrong. If you do wrong, you will not get a free pass from God. Because now there's no excuse. His word, his spirit, his power is here. We have no excuse as to why we continually want to live wicked. And we need to repent before it's too late. Now let's get into the scriptures. But before we do so, let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask that your spirit will help me and empower me as you have done so many times before to preach your word. Anoint me to speak what you'd have me to say. That people here and people that may see this sermon or hear this sermon online need to hear as it relates to your spirit. You live in every single believer and nobody has to feel inferior because they don't have certain spiritual gifts. And I just pray that you'll help me to communicate it properly, truthfully, and with the love and compassion of God in my heart. For those who are caught up in this, that I may want to see them free from religious bondages that cause people to be envious and angry. That cause people to feel like somehow God has left them out or overlooked them when you haven't overlooked any of your children. If your word is so powerful as it says that not one sparrow is sold or not one bird falls out of the sky without you knowing how much more do you know your children, the people who are called by your name, who humble themselves and turn to you for salvation. I ask Lord for your grace and mercy and power to communicate the truth of your word. Cleanse my heart from all sin. Purify my family's heart from sin that they may hear what the Spirit would have to say to the church. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to go to Ephesians 4. We're going to get on part of this. Like I said, I've, I've preached on some of these verses before, but it's very important that we come back as we attack false doctrines we need the truth of the word. 
We need it. We cannot live without the truth of God's word. We must rightly divide the word of truth. Chapter 4 says, I, brethren, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace. That's the key. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is, what is it but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also, that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And the Bible goes on to tell us that he gave some to be apostles and prophets and different things. And the reason why he did this, I'm going to skip forward to verse 13 till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature, the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to, to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him and all things which is the head even Christ from whom the whole bodily fit, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore, and there testifying the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as of the Gentiles walk. In the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto unclean, to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. And then it tells you to put off all of the wicked things of the old man and put on the new man. See, this is the fact. We got to stop being carried away by every wind and doctrine. That's why we got all these denominations of people with their own opinions as to how you are to be saved or live a saved life. When in actuality, every believer is supposed to be working as one body. Every believer is supposed to be working under one spirit. Every believer is supposed to live under one Lord Jesus, one faith, the Christian faith, one baptism, the baptism of the Holy Spirit into our lives. Do you understand? When you become a believer, you are baptized by one spirit. And to the body of Christ, this is not water baptism. This is not speaking in tongues. This is not that. It's talking about the fact that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit bears witness that you are a child of God now. That your sins have been washed away now. That you want to live a holy life for Jesus now. And you need the Holy Ghost to live a full life because the Bible says that if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. It says that in Romans 8 9. So we got to understand that the purpose of me reading this today is not to get into the fact that God put um, apostles and different people he gave to the body. I've already preached on that. 
What we want to do is understand that the foundation of the Holy Spirit, he comes and he's no respecter of persons. He doesn't look down on you because you're rich or poor, black or white or Mexican or Hispanic or Asian. You understand? God doesn't look down on anyone. As you see all of these people out here, politicians and things, claiming that they're for all people when in actuality they have prejudices in their heart and God knows it. There is no sincere candidate out here going for president, not Clinton, not Trump. And yet you see people for the sake of voting, they're going to choose one or another. Now I agree that I don't see any need for anyone to vote for Hillary. The way she promotes abortion, which is murder, the way she supports the gay agenda, she's very openly spoken about it. I don't see how anybody can vote for Mr. Trump, who claims to be a Christian one minute, but he's always on the set cussing. He has casinos and things that have destroyed many families through gambling and greed. Do you understand? Yeah. There is nobody out there that is representing Jesus Christ and those that are telling people that they are, they're lying. Okay? And those that have God's spirit should know better than to participate in any election, whether you have the freedom to or not. You got the freedom to do it. It's not illegal, but how could your conscience allow you to vote for anybody? Just like back in when Obama was running, or Bush was running, or any of these people were running. None of these people have the heart of God. You understand? None of these people, and it's a shame that as a U.S. citizen with the right to vote, I don't have a candidate that I can vote for with a clear conscience. Some people do it. Many will do it for voting sake. They have a right to do it. I'm not going to condemn them, but I'm going to ask the question, how can you do it with a pure conscience? That's just the question I have to ask. You know, it's a shame. But that's what we've come to because people, a lot of these people go to churches. Hillary Clinton was in churches trying to get churches votes. The churches should never hosted her, but they're going to do it because of her political status. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She's not coming here to the Christian church. She's not coming to my home and promoting nothing, and neither is Mr. Trump or any of them. I'm not standing up telling people to vote for either one of them because the lesser of two evils is still evil. Do you understand? And a person that really wants to change this country for the Lord is not even going to be allowed to get up there. Mm. They'll never get the vote. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Because you're living in a world where people have turned their back on God. And that's why they're running after all these teachers having itching ears. Let's go to Ephesians chapter number 5. That's why I read through those verses so quickly. There are things that need to be covered here. Ephesians chapter 5, and we will go to verse 16. Preached on these before, but they're very important. Very important. Let me uh, correct myself. Galatians chapter 5. Let me go to Ephesians chapter 5 first. At the beginning. I do believe there's a verse, but if it's not, we'll go right to Galatians. Yes. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of, of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also have loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor 
but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among ye as become of saints, neither filthiness nor f which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For ye know, for this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things come of the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light. Walk. Uh, now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Here we go. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Close parentheses. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is life, light. Wherefore, if he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and rise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. There we go. Now we will go to Galatians chapter 5. That is important information that I just read. Do not have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Those scriptures right there let you know that the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. You got people out here who are teaching that you can disobey and still go to heaven. That is a false teaching. Okay? Okay. The Bible says the wrath of God come up upon the children of disobedience. That's why we need the Spirit. Now we'll get to the fruit of the Spirit, which is in Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 16. So forgive me for getting a little, little twisted up at the beginning when I was talking about the Scriptures. As it relates to what chapter I was going to start on. See... We're human around here. We don't act like we're so spiritual that we don't apologize when we make mistakes. There are a lot of people out here that don't, that would not apologize, especially when they're being recorded. Do you understand what I'm saying? Their pride won't let them. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye ought. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, which is uncontrolled evil desire. Idolatry which is putting things ahead of God, worshiping things instead of the God of the universe. There are people that worship grace. There are people that worship faith. That's why they tell you if you haven't been healed of a disease or a disability that you don't have any faith. These people are worshiping faith and they need to stop before they lose their souls. God can use anybody, no matter what your physical limitation is. God will use you for his glory and you don't have to do more than the next man or the next woman. If you are faithful where God has you, you'll receive a great reward in heaven. So stay faithful and trust in God and don't waver. 
because somebody tried to get you caught up in a false doctrine, which is going all over these different churches that believe in all these signs and wonders. That's why the Antichrist is, is going to come with lying wonders and signs and deceive a lot of these people. And they're being deceived today because you got a lot of people that are testifying that they've been healed and they really haven't been. Mm -hmm. See, if you get healed, you should be able to get medical evidence that you've been healed. That's true. And a lot of these people in these Benny Hinn crusades and these different crusades, there are different people out here that are playing these games and they're not getting any medical validation. You get healed of something, it'll be documented somewhere that you had it, right? Yeah. And you can go to that doctor and that doctor can be astounded by the fact that you got healed from that debilitating disease. But there's evidence to everything. And these people just want you to believe what you see and hear. And some of these people are even paid to stand up there and lie. Some people who can walk actually get into wheelchairs and get up and make it look like they've been healed. See, that makes it hard on somebody who really was crippled and got healed. Do you understand? Because God can heal, and God has healed people who really had disabilities. But it has always been able to be borne witness to. God doesn't leave any stone unturned. When he healed the lepers in, in, in the book and the gospels, Jesus told them to go show themselves to the priest, mm. which is what the law commanded. So the priest could complete, can proclaim these people to be healed. Mm -hmm. So don't be deceived. Don't be deceived by what these people are doing. I had to stop and get that out. It's all idolatry. People worshiping grace, saying that grace is a license to sin, basically, and what they're teaching. Saying that God overrides free will, that's a lie. He doesn't. He will judge you for the decisions you make, whether good or bad. He will not override them. Idolatry, witchcraft, those are people that manipulate and intimidate and dominate people. Not just people that play with horoscopes and people that, that, that take their the month they were born and put it under a zodiac sign. That's witchcraft. And whether you knew that or not, that's why I don't do that. Don't let nobody tell you because you were born in August that you were a Leo or you're a Virgo because you were born in September. Do you understand? Or a Libra. Don't let people do this to you. This is witchcraft. The Bible says that all sorcerers will have their part in a lake of fire. God is the one that determined you, you know, who you are and the quality of your life, not a horoscope. Amen? And people are doing this. People are calling up psychics. This is witchcraft. This is not the gospel. God is not walking around here having people prophesy that their husband cheated, that somebody's husband cheated on them. Don't get caught up in that stuff. You know, God wants you holy. That's his concern, is that you live holy. Okay? Hatred. A lot of hate going on around here. Variants. Emulations. These are people that are jealous. This is jealousy and envy and all that kind of stuff going on. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresies, which are false doctrines. You got people that are traitors living in sedition. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you, I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That tells those people it's not their works getting burned up and they getting in heaven. Those people are going to hell if they don't repent. Don't be deceived. But here's the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. This is real faith. Meekness, which is gentleness, being kind to people. 
temperance, which is the ability to control yourself. There's no such thing as I can't help myself. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. When the Temptations made that song and said, I can't help myself, they were lying. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I don't mess around with those old songs. You, you have no clue what they were teaching people. And just a group like the Temptations right there, it just tell it tells you it's tempting. See, we got to be careful. I listen to all that stuff and I know those songs. And now I, when I hear the lyrics, I, I, I cringe because I'm like, wow, that's what they were teaching? But they put it to a groovy beat and everybody wants to dance to it. That's how they get you. Meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. People always trying to keep up with the Joneses. Well, the Joneses got a new car, I want a new car. The Joneses got a new house, I want a new house. You understand what I'm saying? Be careful. Be thankful. And if God blesses you to, to, to upgrade or to get something that you didn't have, be thankful to the Lord and humble about it. Mm -hmm. People want to show off. Look at what I got. And then you want what they got. See, we got to be careful. I teach you this because I care about you. And I'm learning so much. So much I'm learning that I want to share. But the evidence of the Spirit is the fruit. The evidence is that you believe on Jesus with all your heart. The evidence is not you performing some miracle or walking in some certain gift. That's why they talk about what they call the nine gifts of the Spirit. The Bible talks about more than nine gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. See, they don't want to talk about the gifts of hospitality. No, they want to prophesy. You understand what I'm saying? They don't want to talk about the gifts of helps, being able to help people. Being able to help people who, without your help, would have a real, real hard time in life. You help somebody pay a bill. That's a gift of help. They don't want that. They want to cast out devils. You understand what I'm saying? They want a gift of, of tongues and interpretation of tongues. They want the gift and the ability to work miracles and healings and different things, but they don't want the gifts of living holy. You understand? There are many more gifts that are taught that the Spirit gives. He gives gifts of grace according to the measure of the fullness of Christ. They don't want to talk about that because it causes you to change and people can't take advantage of you when you know the truth. Amen? The truth will make you free. You don't have to be in church, running around the church, acting like you lost your mind. God wants people with good sense. He does not want people losing their mind. He wants people living holy. That's the difference. That's why I had to remove myself from certain things. I have people that I know that go to these churches. I pray that their eyes open. Because, see, some people are so connected to those churches, they wouldn't leave. No matter what you told them about the church, they still won't leave. You, all you can do is pray for them. You can't make them leave. They have a free will to be here or there. You understand? I'm not going to try to seduce people into coming here. Those that need to hear the word, I trust God, he'll have them. Those that need to hear this teaching, he'll allow us to get it out there so that those who do not feel comfortable with coming to a home because quite frankly there's not a whole lot of room here for a big crowd but I can teach the gospel from my home my wife is recording she can post it and we post it and anyone that wants to click on and listen and see what God is doing can do so and I say that because my desire is to be used by God for his glory, not for mine. It's not so I can blow up on the Internet. Because let me tell you, the devil attacks. He doesn't want me preaching the gospel. 
anywhere, whether it's in my home, whether it's in a big church, wherever it is. The devil don't want the truth coming out. Now I get on the internet and deal with people who believe these false doctrines and give them scripture and give them truth. And they get angrier and angrier as I tell them the truth. And they attack me and call me everything but, the, but a child of God. They tell me I'm not saved. But then, then they say that the Bible says that no man can pluck me out of my hand. How you gonna, out of his hand? How are you going to tell me I'm not saved? My lifestyle will speak for it. They don't want to hear scriptures like, uh, show me your faith without, without works and I'll show you my faith by my works. They don't want to hear that. But the Bible teaches that. If I'm a Christian, I have the Holy Ghost, the fruits are going to be born witness. I'm going to do works that God has prepared me to. It's not the work of me trying to keep the whole Old Testament law. It's the works of me obeying the New Testament covenant and the commands that God has given me in the New Testament, which bring, which in fact minister life, where the law minister death. Do you understand? Because if there was a commandment that could bring life, then the Bible said righteousness would have come by the law. But no. Righteousness comes when God's grace gets in your life and the Holy Ghost comes and lives in you. You become God's property. Do you understand? But God still won't make you go against your will. No matter how sincere you are following Jesus, you have to resist temptation like everyone else mm -hmm. till the day that you die or the rapture takes place and God calls us because some are not going to die by way of the grave. Some are going to go up in a rapture. We don't know who they're, who those are, but we're to be ready. Whether death comes calling unexpectedly or if Jesus comes calling <laughs> and that trumpet sounds and that voice says, come up hither. We want to be ready and we want to be right with God so that we will go. Amen. 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 We need the Holy Ghost. Every believer has the Holy Ghost. Every believer. Not one is excluded. We may not all have the same gifts and abilities, but if you believe in Jesus Christ that he died on the cross and rose from the dead, you have the Holy Ghost. Amen. You have the Holy Spirit. He is in you. And he expects you to live holy. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm so grateful that you gave me the ability to communicate your gospel. I'm so grateful, Lord, for every opportunity I have to preach and teach the word. I pray, God, that you minister life to my family and to those who may hear this sermon. Fill us with your spirit and your power as we sang earlier. Live inside of me. You're the living water. You're the never drying fountain. You're my comforter and counselor. Take complete control over my life. And help me to walk uprightly. I know you'll never override my will, but keep me forever mindful of the truth of the gospel in my life to help me not do anything that will hurt you or that will grieve you. And help me to be quick to repent when you reveal to me that there's sin in my life so that I may not allow sin to destroy me. I want to be yours forever. Help me walk the lifestyle and live according to the integrity and the honesty and the truth of the gospel that I may be a living witness to those who observe my life as to what God has done in my life to change me from a vile sinner into an obedient servant and born again child of the Lord, of God the Father, through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I ask, Lord, that my life will reflect as salt and light in this dark world and that my wife and children, my mother-in-law who attended and those who sometimes come through, 
that they would want to live holy so that they would make it into heaven and that we could all celebrate together as one big happy family in Jesus unified in the spirit may you charge up those that are yours that are they're just in a place where the gospel is not properly being taught I pray that you will charge them and empower them to study the word to know the truth and to openly speak of the truth and if they have to depart from these churches that they be willing to depart in order that they may maintain the truth and not be perverted or led astray by a false teacher or a false prophet we ask for your spirit's help give us mercies protect us and keep us safe in jesus name amen, amen. god bless you you are dismissed going this grace and praise the lord hallelujah glory to god